I never refused the fight in my life, so I don't know what is with these guys. Filip Hurkovic has avoided once more former unified heavyweight title holder Andy Ruiz Jr. and former unified cruiserweight world champion Murad Gassiev have both declined the invitation to fight for the IBF mandatory position against Filip Hirgovic aka El Animal joining the list that featured Luis Ortiz and former WBO heavyweight world champion Joseph Parker. Still, I'm reluctant to make El Animal the quote-unquote boogeyman of this current heavyweight division simply because Filip Hirkovic himself will be the first to admit he hasn't fought anyone of note as of today. And I don't think that none of these fighters that passed up on the fight against the undefeated Croatian heavyweight contender is scared of Hirga per se. However, as it stands today, at the making of this episode, Filip Hrgovic has been blatantly avoided by yet another top heavyweight. And that is indicative of today's era of boxing, part of the reason why the current heavyweight division has been stagnated for quite some time now. And we will discuss all of that and more in today's video. Hey, what's going on ringsiders? This is your host, Boxing Subjective Observer, and welcome back to Ringside Stories, or if you're new, we make content regarding boxing through mini documentaries, backstories, takeaways, and much more. So if you enjoy that type of content, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for the latest here on Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for your support in advance, and welcome to the channel. So Andy Ruiz has passed up on the Filip Hrgovic fight and is apparently in talks with Joseph Parker to sort out a potential Parker-Ruiz rematch. Now I understand Ruiz's position with regards to fighting Filip Hrgovic. Hrga is too risky a fight for Ruiz as of right now and getting a guaranteed shot at the IBF world title seems not enough of an incentive. Now that is disappointing coming from the man who got his moment of fame and his biggest financial reward for taking a last minute opportunity scoring one of the biggest upsets at least in recent heavyweight history in the process. That same destroyer does not show the same hunger when it comes to fighting Filip Hrgovic which proves Andy Ruiz's priority as of today is not regaining a portion of the heavyweight world championship and or not about testing himself against the very best in the division which when speaking of a Hrga fight we have heard before. When we're talking about business moves uh, you know, it kind of didn't make any sense. Uh, you know, I was really trying to win the battle for the purse bid, and uh, we just took another route. Uh, you know, so I, you know, I, I was originally trying to get Triller to, uh, you know, bid on the fight. So that was where, you know, and then you know, I started building a relationship with them um, from there, and uh, you know, I finally ended up getting, you know, getting something out of it, and uh, I thought it was, I think it was a, a great. I mean, I'm, I'm ecstatic about the, the deal that I've gotten. And, um, you know, if, if anybody knew about it, then it, it wouldn't, you know, it doesn't make any sense to go otherwise. So following in Michael the Bounty Hunter's footsteps, Andy Ruiz has just become the fifth fighter in a row to decline the invitation from the IBF to determine their mandatory challenger. For the competitive sports that is, or maybe was, boxing, it's confusing to learn that some of today's fighters are not in boxing to fight the best, much less aspire to be the best. A sentiment Filip Hrgovic himself echoes. Uh, I know boxing is business, but for me, boxing is not gonna be, never gonna be only business. So I want challenges. I I, I want uh, to box with the best in the division, no matter of what money is there. I believe I can beat all the heavyweights in the division. I don't know, knock him out or win on points, but I think I'm a better fighter than Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. I spar with him, I spar with Deontay Wilder. I think I'm the most complete fighter in the division. So even seven fights in, you believe you have the beating of Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua right now? Yeah, I can beat them, 100%. Okay. Okay. Now, Filip Hrgovic is a confident fighter and a seasoned amateur. Yet as a pro, Hrga lacks experience, certainly at the very elite level. Although a fairly young heavyweight as of today, Hrgovic will need good fights to progress his career, sharpen his skills in order to prepare himself to face the absolute best in the division. And I would like to have real fights while, while waiting, you know, that uh, title shot. 
I need step up fights, I need good fights because uh, that's the only way I can grow. I feel like I'm the best and I have best abilities, but of course I need hard fights. I need twelve round wars to come on top of my uh, abilities. Unfortunately, the undefeated Croatian currently finds himself in a situation where he does not offer as much financial gain as the risk involved fighting him. And yes, Luis King Kong Ortiz, who I brand today as overrated simply because of his lack of quality opposition throughout his career, had a brief stint in the mid 2010s where he was avoided for a while. Yet Team Ortiz put so much effort in branding him as avoided or the quote unquote boogeyman of the current heavyweight division that they forgot to land him meaningful fights with the exception of his first fight with the bronze bomber aka Deontay Wilder when Luis Ortiz was still a relative force in the heavyweight division. By the way, Ortiz's brand of the boogeyman by now has been completely debunked of which you can see some examples in the fake boogeyman documentary. Luis Ortiz is at a point of being overrated today having faced less than stellar opposition for most of his career while simultaneously rejecting his biggest payday. Fortunately, this does not yet apply to Filip Hirgovic and I'm sure both of his promotion outfits, that meaning Wasserman or Sauerland Promotions and co-promoter Eddie Hearn of Matchroom are doing all they can to prevent Hirgovic from turning into the next Luis Ortiz whose career unfortunately has been mismanaged and allowed to be used as a prop to boost Deontay Wilder's profile and credibility. And so Filip Hrgovic is facing a real challenge securing an opponent similar to 2019 when then undefeated unified champion of the world Anthony Joshua was begging for an opponent to replace Jarrell Miller who popped dirty for steroids that saw many fighters declined the opportunity of a lifetime left, right and center. Now of course Filip Hrgovic is not as accomplished as Anthony Joshua at least not yet as a pro Still, he is forced to move down the IBF rankings in order to secure himself an opponent willing to fight for a guaranteed shot at the IBF heavyweight world title. AJ himself is not in the runnings for the Hirgo Beach fight next as he is expected to face current IBF title holder Oleksandr Usyk for the Usyk Joshua rematch next. Hirgo's amateur rival Tony Yoka who surprisingly did accept the Hirgovic fight at first, eventually had to withdraw as Yoka is contractually obligated to reschedule his fight with other current top 15 heavyweight contender Martin Bacoli. Another former amateur rival Joy Joyce is on the brink of challenging for the WBO World Championship and is unlikely to be a candidate for Filip Hrgovic next. And as mentioned, Michael Hunter, Luis Ortiz, Joseph Parker, and now Murat Gassiev and Andy Ruiz Jr. have all turned down the fight against Filip Hrgovic for the IBF final title eliminator. Although all of these fights have their reasons, and in my opinion certainly are not scared of Filip Hrgovic per se, they still have all avoided El Animal, which again proves that some fighters in this era do not view winning a world title or obtaining heavyweight glory the same as making the most money. Managers, boxing promoters, and TV networks have pulled a heap of finagling tactics that left fans without many of their desired fights, something young Tyson Fury picked up on when he was on the come up in the early 2010s. This is why the heavyweights ain't the glory divisions anymore. Now, him to have a little injury in his finger or whatever he's got, another excuse, is pathetic. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Ironically, years after Tyson Fury became notorious for pulling out of fights himself. Another example of fighters not fighting for glory, rather financial incentive, has been Deontay Wilder, who I like as a fighter, yet looking at his career, Team Wilder blatantly blocked the fight for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world against Anthony Joshua. Goodbye to Joshua and hello to Fury. You can't punch. I don't know what you talking about knocking somebody in the second round. You ain't never knocked nobody in no second round. You got pillows for fists. That's why I kept running through you. Because you can't <laughs> punch. Yet that pillow-fisted Fury stopped the Bronze Bomber twice in a row. And Deontay Wilder notoriously ducked Dillian the body snatcher white. And then he, and he also said to me, private message, oh, I'm going to make you wait two years. I'm like, why are you getting paid career high money? Wilder texted that? Yeah. I can't show you the text. Wow. 
about. There you go. And tell your promoters to give to give me what I want. Get it on easy. Because honestly, I don't have to do anything for at least two years. Get out. Oh, oh wow. Dylan White, get your s together, man. That's all you gotta do. Go fight the right fights and stop running away from the fight. You had the opportunity and you know it. You blew it. Which is part of the reason why Dillian White, at least at the making of today's video, still hasn't got his world title shot, even though in the last five years, Dillian White has been the WBC's number one contender for over 900 days, winning the WBC silver title in the process, and more recently, the WBC interim world title. Dillian White is an easy style for me. It's an easy fight. Trust me, his style is easy. He got a wild, wild style. If people think I'm wild, come on. Fights that fans demand, fights that seem the most logical to make, fights that must happen, yet for whatever reason, simply do not happen. The truth is the truth, and they always say the truth to set you free. You know, if it's a lie, then the truth shall come out, you know, and uh, that's just what happened. A heavyweight era that is rich in heavyweight talent, yet rarely sees the best fight the best. I know boxing is business, but for me, boxing is not gonna be, never gonna be only business. So I want challenges. I want uh, to box with the best in the division, no matter of what money is there. Filip Kurkovic seems to be a chip of the old block, and although he believes in himself, El Animal respects the sport of boxing enough to comprehend he needs more experience at the very elite in order to make a serious championship run. I feel like I'm the best and I have best abilities, but of course I need hard fights, I need twelve round wars, I need step up fights, I need good fights because uh, that's the only way I can grow. Hopefully, Filip Hrgovic will not fall victim of his own talent nor of poor career management. Regardless of his current setbacks and finding proper competition for the IBF final title eliminator, hopefully, we can still see Hrga improve and in against better quality opposition this year, 2022. These are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let us know what you make of Filip Hrgovic being avoided by yet another of the top heavyweights. And who would you like to see El Anil? email in with next drop your thoughts and your suggestions in the comments below if you enjoy this kind of content and you haven't already don't forget to subscribe give a thumbs up and hit that notification bell as it helps out the channel a lot ie inspire us to make more quality content for y'all as always thanks so much for your support in advance and welcome to ringside stories now if you've done that already you're amazing we already know that you are the true undisputed world champion Till next time, Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer, with Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching, and have a legendary day.